The legacy of Thomas Jefferson in gardening is really uh, quite profound. And um, at Monticello, the uh, gardens over the last 50 years have been uh, restored to um, uh, their condition during Jefferson's lifetime. Uh, the flower gardens were put back in the um, late 1930s and early 1940s by the Garden Club of Virginia. And um, uh, they restored the gardens based on uh, driving up at night and they would shine the headlights of their automobiles across the, the west lawn. And so doing in the evening, they could see the depression of uh, what was once a gravel walk that winded its way around the West Lawn. And also on either side of this winding walk were uh, raised beds where flowering bulbs were still coming up 120 years after Thomas Jefferson died. So they put these garden back with, uh, with uh, some real accuracy, uh, particularly considering the era in which it was done. Uh, the grove, which was this 18-acre ornamental forest, an expression of Jefferson's vision of the true American garden. He said, in America, we can make gardens without expense. We have only to cut out the superabundant plants. And that was recreated uh, in the late 1970s when I first arrived at Monticello. And finally, the, um, uh, the seven-acre <clears throat> vegetable and fruit garden was put back in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Uh, based on Jefferson's rich documentary record, but also years of archaeological excavations that enabled us to um, um, restore Jefferson's thousand-foot-long garden wall after doing excavations of uh, extant sections. Uh, we found stains of 79 of the original fruit trees and were able to actually put the same trees in the exact same place where he had them. Um, we found the, the footings and the foundation for this garden temple or a garden pavilion that was at the halfway point of the thousand foot long garden. Uh, Jefferson left really good notes about the actual character of the fruits and vegetables and uh, one of my roles was to actually retrieve a lot of Jefferson's original varieties of, uh, from the tennis ball lettuce to the uh, breast of Venus peach and that was an exciting challenge. Um, and. Um, Jefferson was in some ways uh, first in food and first um, in gardening and first in wine in so many different ways. Uh, he uh, wrote that uh, no nation is drunk and wine is cheap and wine is indispensable to my health. He, uh, he loved the greatest um, uh, vintages from France and was a great uh, pioneer in early American grape culture. And um, Jefferson's legacy in food is remarkable. He, uh, uh, he loved vegetable cuisine, and uh, his daughters and granddaughters left a rich wealth of uh, recipes having to do with uh, vegetable cuisine in the kitchen at Monticello. <clears throat> and then as a gardener, Jefferson was um, uh, remarkable in introducing American plants into his, uh, his landscapes and experimenting with this great range of vegetables uh, and documenting all the different things that he was trying out at Monticello. So Jefferson was first in food and first in gardening and first in wine in so many different ways. Um, uh, Michelle Obama's White House Kitchen Garden has a discrete section devoted to the legacy of Thomas Jefferson. Uh, Alice Waters, sort of the mother of the farm to table movement from California, uh, came to Monticello three and a half years ago and made a black tie dinner for 300 people on the West Lawn and she described it as the most important meal that she'd ever made. Uh, so the Jefferson legacy um, is particularly, I think, profound. And at Monticello today, uh, we use um, gardening as a way to talk more about Thomas Jefferson, uh, to show the different dimensions of his personality. Uh, you see the garden scientists on the one hand. On the other hand, you see a romantic dreamer conjuring up grottos and um, uh, romantic um, uh, outbuildings throughout the, uh, the estate at Monticello. Um, one of my roles at Monticello was trying to find the original plants that Jefferson grew and um, um, I wrote some four books on Jefferson and gardening and uh, the latest is uh, one called A Rich Spot of Earth, Thomas Jefferson's Revolutionary Garden at Monticello. And uh, it's uh, published by Yale University Press and Alice Waters wrote the introduction. And um, um, it's, it was sort of my final uh, my final effort at Monticello after working there for some 35 years. And I found out a lot of new information about Jefferson and had a lot of new insights into uh, Jefferson's gardening adventures at Monticello. Uh, at Monticello we have garden tours, we have a seed program, uh, we have a, a nursery called the Thomas Jefferson Center for Historic Plants, uh, we have a two-week institute in historic landscape preservation, 
So education is a very profound part of the program in, uh, in Monticello today. In September every year we have a Heritage Harvest Festival uh, celebrating Jefferson as America's first foodie and we have uh, tastings of uh, 200 varieties of heirloom tomatoes and uh, some 200 different educational programs and chef demonstrations and um, um, children's programs and a good time is had by all. Uh, we're trying to reach a new market of people interested in things like uh, organic gardening and uh, sustainable agriculture and um, uh, vegetarian cuisine. And um, uh, in doing so, I think we're celebrating Jefferson, but also reaching a new audience um, throughout the country.